In this video, I want to review how you can export this scan into a 3D CAD file view so that you can see this in AutoCAD or Revit or whatever CAD viewer you are using. Before I begin, I want to make sure that you know that this video is going to go through two methods essentially uh, because there's quite, probably a few reasons why you need to export this as a CAD file. The first one being the fact that you just want to see this in CAD and overlay it onto a CAD drawing similar to this where you want to bring it in and say, hey, here's the scan that I did, and here's where it would fall on my drawing, and here's the rebar grid or the conduits that we need to be aware of before we drill piping and things like that. So that might be something you want to do with the scan and, and bring it in and overlay it with the drawing. Another thing you might want to do is to bring it in on its own and just have it in space like this and take a bunch of your scans and st essentially stitch them together to make a larger grid, to make a larger picture of what a, a floor looks like after you've done several scans and you stitch them together. So those are just a couple of examples that I can see you would use this for. Uh, and it's important to know how you can, number one, export it, number two, scale it properly, and number three, do that overlay. Now for some of you, you're going to notice that the file size of these scans, when you export them, they're going to be a little bit large. And if you can see here, I am in 3D mode, I just went to the side view, I'm in 3D mode. This is a lot of line work information. It's 3D objects, as you can see, as I highlight the stuff over here in CAD is 3D objects. So at the end of the video, I'll show you a couple ways you can clean it. But to be honest, in AutoCAD, the easiest way to clean this file is to simply save the DXF you exported as a DWG, which is another CAD file type. Just save it as a DWG and you drastically reduce file size. I will also show you how you can use Revit as a way to clean the file and make it really workable, especially if you're working with multiple scans. To be honest, I'm not gonna have all the answers. And if you have any answers as well that you want to share, please put them in the comments. I'm sure a lot of people would appreciate your feedback as well if you've done this before. So if you need help with cleaning, stay tuned for the end of the video. But for now, let's go ahead and just start basic of getting this exported from Provost Detection and into AutoCAD. Here I am in Provost Detection, and what you can see first is that I've actually changed my units to metric so I can remind myself exactly how big my scans are. The grids are actually initially made to be in metric units, and you can see that by this, the zero, zero of your scans over here, and you go to the right, the edge of the scan is exactly 1200 millimeters. That's how far you're going. If I, this is for the larger, this is for the larger grid. If I switch this to Imperial units real quick, you can see that, um, it's 44 inches to almost 48 inches, but you actually, the conversion between 1200 millimeters and inches is actually 47.25 inches. And you can see that on my Google converter here. 1200 millimeters actually converts to 47.25 inches. So just keep that in mind. If you're using the smaller grid, it's gonna be a similar conversion, but if I go ahead and open up a smaller, what I usually call two foot by two foot grid, this is actually, if I go to Imperial units, I sorry, if I go to metric units, it's a 600 millimeter scan and 600 millimeters converts to 23.6 inches. So keep that in mind. Um, I recommend that you just remember that the dimensions of this, these scans are either 600 millimeters by 600 millimeters. That's the exact dimensions of these scans. Or if you're using the larger scans, they are 1200 millimeters by 1200 millimeters. And I'm going to show you why that's important when we actually export it into AutoCAD. So to export it, you simply go to 3D mode. And right now I am using the 1200 millimeter by 1200 millimeter scan, just so you know. And you simply go to export in 3D and it's going to save it as a, a DXF file. There are other scan file types if you want to try these out. But if you're using these in AutoCAD, DXF is what you want to save it as. And so you can see I already saved it as a test 3D file. And you can see how big it is. It is 21 megabytes. That's how much information is saved as a DXF file. Now, granted, when you save this as a DWG, that will drastically reduce that size. But a DXF file is usually much bigger in size by nature. So just keep that in mind as a 21 meg file. So I went ahead and saved that. And now let me go ahead and open that. I'm looking for DXFs. Here's my test 3D file. I'm going to open it. And here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check it for scaling. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a quick line. I'm going to press L and I'm going to start that line at my zero, zero mark. And I'm going to go ahead and turn ortho mode on down here. So my lines are straight. And if I do an ortho down this line, you can see that it's coming in at like it says a hundred feet. So I obviously know that it's not scaled properly. I'm going to take a look at my units and remember, I know that this is a 1200 millimeter by 1200 millimeter scan. So let me just really quick change my units and I bet you it's actually in 
millimeters. I'm going to just quickly change it to millimeters. I'm going to press apply and I'm not going to rescale anything because I believe that the units are already correct. It just, when I brought it in, AutoCAD just assumed wrong. So I'm going to just tell AutoCAD that no, it's in millimeters. I'm not going to rescale anything. I'm going to press apply. I'm going to press that line button and let me draw from my zero zero. And now if I come over here, I'll type in 1200 millimeters and there you can, you see that it's coming in right at that 1200 millimeter mark. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and draw a full box around my scan. So here I go. I'm going to go 1200 millimeters from here and I'll go 1200 millimeters to the left and 1200 millimeters back up. And now I have that box that represents the outer edge of my scan that you saw in Brofus Detection. And the reason I like to make a box is because this box now represents the edges of that scan that I can use to align scans to each other or bring it into another CAD file if I need to overlay it on top of. So now I have this scan ready to go. It's in millimeters. And to be honest, I'm in the US, so I like to work with inches. So I'll quickly go back to my units box. And this is all preference. So if you like to work in millimeters, you're good. Um, I'm actually going to switch this to inches of units. I'll say apply, and I'm going to go ahead and rescale everything so that everything's red in inches. And I'll go ahead and back and zoom in. And you can see now if I do a distance check, this line from 00, zero to this 1200 millimeter mark is now being read as three foot 11 and a quarter. And you can see that right there in the center of the draw, in the center of that line. So that's just important for you to know. That's why it's important to make sure that uh, you know that this is a 1200 millimeter by 1200 millimeter drawing so that if you are scaling this, you scale it properly and you can see that I've done so. So now I'm, now I'm working in inches. Now the easy part comes. So if you just have more scans you need to align, you can simply copy and paste them and align them to the uh, sides of the scan appropriately as you're going to make yourself a grid of scans uh, that you need to bring in. Or if you're doing what, what I do a lot is you have a CAD file over here and let's say you need to align it to this drawing. Well, you can do so. So as you see, I've already done it once, but I'm going to go ahead and redo that process so you can see how I did this. And it's really simple. Let's say that I know that on my CAD file, this zero, zero mark belongs at the coordinate of five feet, five feet on this scan. So the zero, zero of this scan is of this drawing is right here. So I'll go ahead and draw a line at the five foot by five foot mark. And I'll just drag it over here. So here's the beginning of my line right here. Okay. So let's say that that intersection, this line to this line intersection is where I know that zero, zero of my scan belongs. So at this point, what I'll do is I'll just simply highlight this drawing. I will copy it via base point. And I'll basically copy it from the zero, zero mark. And now, as you can probably assume, I'm going to go over to my drawing and paste it on that exact same spot. So now I'm over here, paste, and boom, goes right there. If I zoom out, you can see it put it right there at that spot. And I'll go ahead and delete this line I made. So yeah, now the drawing's in there, now it's overlaid, and I can see where the rebar grid is in comparison to what I'm gonna be laying out so I can make sure that if I'm putting any pipes, I can try to make sure that I'm missing certain objects, etc., and I can draft accordingly. Now, this isn't really an AutoCAD lesson in full, so just be aware that sometimes if the units for your CAD drawing are not the same units as your, that you have over here, you might need to finagle your units a little bit again to make sure that that process goes flawlessly. If you have questions about that, leave them in the comments. Uh, AutoCAD has some really easy forums on how to make sure that uh, you can scale things properly. But it's pretty straightforward, especially if you're a CAD user, to fix that problem. And the same thing goes for aligning. There's a lot of different ways to align scans to drawings, especially if they're not a perfect north, south, east, west drawing. Again, I encourage you to look at forums and the like to get that kind of information. So that's how you overlay a drawing onto a, another drawing. So really quickly, I want to go through a couple of what I call cleaning methods or file size reduction methods in case you are worried about that file size. And let me just show you what I meant earlier about saving this as a DWG. When you export it, it saves it as a DXF, okay? And there's no other way to export it. So by default, it's going to come out as a DXF. And you can see that as a DXF, it's 21 megabytes as a, as a file size. Immediately when you go into AutoCAD and you save that as a DWG, which is a normal AutoCAD file type, you can see that it saves it as a four megabit file. It drastically reduces the file size. So if file size is your concern or if it's lagging, save it as a DWG um, and then go ahead and, and keep working with it. That should be your main 
avenue for cleaning it and reducing file size. Yes, there are other things you can do in AutoCAD to reduce file size, such as overkill command, purge command, things like that. But I would, honestly, I'm going to refer you to the AutoCAD forums for help on how to reduce file size for what this file is. You can see these are all 3D faces. And uh, you might get a lot better of an answer from AutoCAD users that use this AutoCAD much more extensively. They can probably help you out if you are concerned with file size, flattening, bringing things to zero elevation, things like that. If you need help with that, I do refer you to the AutoCAD forums and AutoCAD support. Uh, the next part of the video though, I'm gonna show you a quick uh, tip and trick you can use Revit for for this, uh, which might help you if you are a Revit user. So stand by if you want to see that. If not, I wish you well, and uh, please leave more questions in the comments. I'm now going to go through how to do this in Revit. I'm going to make a new project in Revit. I'm just going to leave it all as default. I'm going to go ahead and go to the 3D mode, and all these 3D elements that I see here, I'm going to go ahead and hide. I don't need to see that. I don't know what your preferences are in Revit, but I like to hide these. So I'm going to go ahead and press EH and get these out of the way. And now I just need to bring in my CAD file. So I'll go ahead and go to the Insert tab, and I'll say I'm going to import a CAD item. And I'm now simply going to look at my file path to make sure I find my file. Once the file is in there, I go ahead and zoom in, set my zoom preferences. It doesn't matter. However, you want to view it in 3D. And usually the next thing I do is I check a distance just to make sure it's scaled properly. If it's not, I go ahead and fix that. Uh, either I do that in Revit or sometimes a way to do it in AutoCAD. If you're at this point and you're using Revit, I'm assuming that I don't need to go into detail. But if you have questions about that, feel free to ask in the comments or go ahead and go to the Revit forums on how to check distances and align or scale things in Revit. And the next thing I'm going to do is go down to the bottom left-hand corner here. And I'm going to say that I want to see things in fine view and realistic view because I like the way it looks when it gets exported. This is a nice feature that I appreciate in Revit. And now you simply need to save this as a CAD file. You go ahead and go to your file, export, CAD formats, DWG. And when you get to this ellipse, let me explain what to do from here by showing you some pictures and what I usually prefer to do to keep it easily workable for me. So go ahead and click it and you're gonna see this screen. I'll go ahead and show you what I like to do as preference for my solids, units and coordinates, and general tabs. But because you're probably an experienced Revit user, feel free to change to your preferences accordingly. But let me show you what my settings do for me. So the first tab is your solids tab. Just make sure that you have ACIS solids selected. I can understand if you want polymesh, but I prefer ACIS solids. For the second tab, which is your units and coordinates tab, I usually keep them at default, whatever I prefer. But for me, that's usually inches and using the internal origin coordinates. And then lastly, on the general tab, I always uncheck the export option for external references. I prefer not to have any external references at all, so I have it look like this. Uh, feel free to copy mine. And usually for good measure, I save it to a lower AutoCAD version, just in case I want to use this between different AutoCADs that might be different years. So I usually go down to 2010 just to be safe. And then I simply press next and I save it into my preferred file path. And let me show you what it looks like in AutoCAD. Here you can see what it looks like. I know it's loading, but if I zoom in, you can see you get a little bit more of a clearer picture of uh, the objects. They seem to be smoother together. Uh, when I'm spinning it around, it smooths. It is smooth when I spin it around. And uh, the file size for these I've noticed was three megabits, which is even smaller than what I was coming up with before when I saved it as a DWG. So you might save a little file size and it looks better and you might enjoy using Revit going forward. So I wanted to show you this. Now, of course, if you wanted to scale it, align it, move it, you just use normal AutoCAD functions. But I wanted to show you what this could look like as well. So I hope that helped and please leave questions in the comments. And I hope that going forward, uh, you can easily determine your preferred method of export as well.